In the non-metastatic setting, um, at ASCO GI, we saw um, three-year update, uh, three-year survival rates for the NeoAgis trial. A brief reminder, this was a trial comparing um, CROSS versus perioperative chemotherapy, largely magic in this trial um, in GE junction adenocarcinomas primarily. And really, at th with three-year survival rates, there was absolutely no difference between um, CROSS versus uh, MAGIC. Of course, one of the main criticisms is that this trial um, was largely using an outdated chemotherapy. Only about 15% of patients got FLOT. Uh, but nevertheless, um, it was uh, exactly identical outcomes at three-year survival rates. When we move into the first-line metastatic setting, uh, I think this is where the biggest splash of perhaps all of ASCO GI was in that we have a new target and a new drug. So Claudin 18.2, which has been on everybody's radar for a while, we saw the first presentation of the phase three first-line spotlight trial. This was built on the uh, phase two FAST trial, uh, suggesting a survival benefit to the addition of Claudin targeting antibodies in um, Claudin positive tumors. But as a brief reminder, um, the spotlight was a randomized phase three trial comparing uh, full FOX, so standard chemotherapy, with uh, or without um, Zolbituximab, which is an anti Claudin 18.2 antibody. All patients were Claudin 18.2 positive. Uh, this is selected on an immunohistic chemistry assay with a cutoff of 75% of cells showing positive staining. And really what we saw is that with a primary endpoint of progression-free survival, the trial extended uh, progression-free survival, so it hit the primary endpoint, and it also extended overall survival. In fact, I believe this is the longest overall survival we've seen to date in a first-line gastroesophageal trial with a survival in the experimental arm of about 18 months. So I think everyone expects that this will ultimately lead to a approval, um, global approval of this agent. We also saw some uh, just press release data suggesting that the GLOW trial, which was a complementary phase three trial, looking at the same question but using um, KPOX as the chemotherapy backbone, was also positive. So now we have a totality of two phase three trials asking the same question in slightly different populations that are both positive. So it's expected that this agent will become a new tool for us, and then it will be up to the field to decide how best to integrate this um, into clinical practice. Certainly there's a lot of interest in combining this with immune therapy. So you could envision a triplet of chemotherapy with zolbituximab, with immunotherapy in, in Claudin positive patients. There was some other nice data at ASCO GI in the, in the gastroesophageal space. Uh, we saw Rationale 305, which was a phase three trial similar to Checkmate 649 in that it was asking the question of adding PD-1 uh, immunotherapy on top of chemotherapy. This was a randomized phase three looking at tistolizumab in combination uh, largely with FibroQ and oxaliplatin. And again, they showed improvement in overall survival in the PDL1 positive, um, in this case, uh, a score greater than 5% um, in their phase three. We haven't seen it in the all randomized patients yet, but fully expect that that will likely be positive. And finally, um, in the late line setting, so and this is a setting where patients had two or more prior lines of therapy, we saw the integrate 2A data. So this was a phase three randomized controlled trial of regorafenib, which is a multi-kinase, um, primarily anti-angiogenic agent against placebo. And so this is a positive phase three. Uh, the magnitude of benefit is there, but the absolute increase um, in overall survival, which was the primary endpoint, uh, remains somewhat limited. And I think it's it's important to note it's a positive phase three trial without a biomarker selection. It's also relevant to note that many of these patients had prior VEGF-directed therapy in the form of ramucirumab. Um, however, it does highlight this is a difficult patient population to treat, um, and unfortunately the outcomes do uh, remain poor. Uh, but this may become another tool for us. So overall, uh, for upper GI and gastric and esophageal, this was a really a great ASCO GI meeting.